Hey guys, this is Sam and both Bloomberg and KGI Securities who have really good track records when it comes to breaking Apple news or at least leaking it for the matter. They talked about what we can expect to see and what we cannot expect to see for the brand new iPhone 8 whenever it's released later in 2017. There's so much to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So first up, Bloomberg says that the iPhone 8 is gonna feature some 3D facial scanning technology that would be located right up here by the speaker grill and the FaceTime HD camera and the ambient light sensor. And the way it would work, they claim, would be more secure than Touch ID and also pretty fast, scanning your entire face in 3D and unlocking the phone within hundreds of milliseconds. But the craziest part yet is that they think it's actually gonna replace Touch ID, meaning that there will be no Touch ID sensor on the iPhone 8. Now I wanna hear your thoughts about this down below in the comments section because I think it's a crazy claim. First, we were worried about it being on the back of the phone, and then we were worried about it maybe not being implemented correctly in the front, but now we're seeing that Touch ID might not even be on the iPhone 8 in the first place. It's interesting how as the months go by, we hear more rumors or tweaked rumors as to what we heard initially. One comment that I've seen from a lot of you, though, is that the iPhone 8 does have a slightly longer power button, and many of you think that it will actually be embedded inside of the power button. And I thought it would be really bad at first, but then I thought about it, and when you hold the phone, whether you hold it with this hand or this hand, you're always gonna have some finger that rests right about here where the longer power or lock button is. So it'd be really interesting if they put it there. And at this point, I think it'd be the perfect solution. Bloomberg also says that there could be a dedicated AI chip for processing artificial intelligence or AI data coming to the iPhone 8. So an example that they gave is that whenever you're typing things on the keyboard, you know those three suggestions that come up at the top, those are actually provided to you by artificial intelligence because your iPhone's trying to predict what you wanna say next. Like I said, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. The story here though is that this chip would be better at processing those requests. It would be doing it in a really power efficient way. At the end of the day, you would probably get better battery life, which I'm 100% for. Now out of everything Bloomberg predicted, I think this last one is what has me most excited. They say that there are some iPhone 8 models in testing with the same ProMotion 120 hertz display that we see on the new 10.5 inch iPad Pro and the new 12.9 inch version as well. If you have not seen this in person, here's a quick on-screen demo that I recorded a couple weeks back now. It's kind of hard to see on camera unless you do some slow motion stuff to really understand it. But if you go into an Apple store or anywhere else with the new iPad Pros, take a look at the screen. It's amazing. Like it's twice as good as the current iPhone screen just because you're making the jump from roughly 60 frames per second or the capacity to handle and display that all the way up to 120 frames a second. And having that on the iPhone 8 would be amazing. I did forget to mention one more thing. The article also stated that there would be three new iPhone models this year. But once again, we have not heard that much. All we know right now is that the iPhone 7S models and the iPhone 8 will probably be getting wireless charging. But then again, it also could be just the iPhone 8. It's still really up in the air. And I don't think anybody truly knows what's happening with the iPhone 7S lineup. Moving on to KGI Securities, they also made some crazy claims as well that nobody including myself, were expecting it to hear. They also say out of the blue that the iPhone 8's not gonna have a Touch ID sensor anywhere. I don't know why we're hearing this all of a sudden. Maybe there was just some issues embedding it into the screen because we did hear that that was an issue for a while and maybe Apple just did not wanna put it on the back which I half applaud them for, but no Touch ID sensor at all compared to one somewhere on the device. I'm not sure if that's the best solution just yet. Of course, everything I've mentioned is a rumor, so it could change by the time the iPhone 8 launches later in 2017, but at the same time, hearing that there's not gonna be Touch ID is kinda worrying. KGI also predicted that the iPhone 8 would feature three gigabytes of RAM, which is gonna be the same amount that the iPhone 7 Plus currently has. I think that's a really good change. Like, I'm glad it's not gonna be two gigabytes like the iPhone 7, but making the jump to four gigabytes would have been really cool, but it doesn't look like we'll be seeing that this time around. Now, one thing that took me off guard from KGI list of predictions is that they say that the iPhone 8 is going to come in only a few colors, probably not as many colors as the iPhone 7 does. Kind of disappointing, and I could totally see Apple pulling uh, it's only available in black or only available uh, in black and silver or black and white, because they did that, if you think back to the iPhone 4, when there weren't those golds and rose golds. But it'd also be kind of disappointing as well because I love my red iPhone 7 and I like having the ability to choose a multitude of colors for my iPhone. So it's gonna be interesting to see if that happens, but something that I definitely wanted to make a note of. Now moving on through the rest of KGI's predictions, they also say that the iPhone 8 is gonna feature better stereo speakers and they didn't really elaborate on those details, but I think it'd be really cool if they made the speaker on the top just a little bit louder because Stereo speakers in the iPhone 7 are really good. I enjoy listening to them, especially if you watch a lot of YouTube or Netflix, movies or TV shows on your phone. 
But the bottom speakers, just because they're bigger, physically they are a little bit louder and it's not super balanced. So if there's a way that Apple could correct that with the iPhone 8, I think that'd be super awesome. Finally, one last detail that KGI shared that I think all of you are really gonna like is that they say that all iPhone models, both the iPhone 7S and iPhone 7S Plus, in addition to the iPhone 8, are gonna feature 64 gigabytes as the base option for storage, which will be doubling the current base option for the iPhone 7 lineup. Now, if you remember for the longest time, 16 gigabytes was Apple's golden standard for the iPhone, and it got ridiculous like four years ago, and then with the iPhone 7, they finally corrected it. Well, with the iPhone 7S and iPhone 8, Apparently 64 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes will be the range for what you can buy on an iPhone as far as storage goes. I think it's gonna be a great option. It's obviously gonna be a better bang for your buck and it's a change that should have happened with the iPhone 7. I'm just glad that we are finally seeing it. Now one last point that KGI predicts and that I wanted to touch on is that the iPhone 8 is not going to be readily available. They say that it's probably gonna launch trailing the iPhone 7S and iPhone 7S Plus models just because those devices are smaller upgrades, more manageable to create and produce, less complicated. And then there's the iPhone 8, which does the opposite of all that. It's the 10th anniversary iPhone and for a lot of people, it's everything they've been waiting for. I can't remember the last time we saw this many leaked images about an Apple product or this many rumors, this much hype, and it's a phone that I'm genuinely excited to get my hands on because it looks like it's gonna be incredible with the screens and the cameras and the 3D facial sensing technology. It's just gonna be a great phone. The problem is, number one, it's gonna be expensive, close to $1,000 what we've been hearing in the past, and number two, it's gonna be really hard to get your hands on it. Let me know down below in the comment section if you're interested in picking up an iPhone 8 later this year, and I also made a hands-on video with this 3D printed version, which I think is super cool. I'll leave that link down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, it would really help me out if you hit that like button down below too. And of course, hit subscribe if you found this video useful and wanna see more videos on the iPhone 8 soon. I've been Sam, I hope all of you are doing great, and I'll talk to you later.